Welcome to the Explore the Bible Sunday School lesson for March the 3rd, 2024. Today's lesson is entitled, A Substitute, and is taken from Genesis chapter 22. As I was preparing this lesson, I was thinking about the taking and giving of test. No one likes test. I know that as a student, uh, I was not really happy to have to have tests and to prepare for them. Uh, teaching the classes that I taught, uh, I found that I didn't like giving the test and having to grade the test. It's twice as much work for the uh, teacher because they have to handle it twice. They have to prepare a test and then they, after the students have it the one time they get it, then this teacher gets it again to grade the test. And I really found it difficult when the tests were subjective, uh, when they were the long answer, not the short answer test. It was difficult. I'm today in the uh, Sunday school classroom used by the older boys in our uh, children's department because today's lesson talks about a boy that was involved in a test. Now, the test was not for him to take, it was for his father to take. For today, we're looking at the test that God gave Abraham when he asked him to sacrifice his son, his only son, the son of the promise, Isaac. This is a very foundational passage. Uh, it's one that helps lay the theology of substitutionary atonement. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But for that reason, it looks ahead to what Jesus Christ did on the cross and is foundational for it. It's also a passage with controversy. The concept of child sacrifice was abhorrent to God, and yet here we see Abraham being called upon to sacrifice his, his child. But it also is a passage which shows us God's character. Uh, God is a God who cares for us and will provide for us, and we see him as Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. We'll look at each of these three things a little bit later uh, as we go through this lesson the foundational passage, the controversy of the passage, and the character of God. Let's pray together. Father, how greatly thankful we are that you are a God who provides for us, that you're a God who helps us through the difficult times, that you stand by us when we are uh, in the midst of trying to understand and work through the difficult tests that come our way. Father, thank you for being there for us. Help us today as we look at this lesson to draw truths from it that will help us understand you better and to do better in the tests that come our way. For this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. In our last session, uh, we saw the deliverance of Lot uh, from the city of Sodom. Uh, we saw God's compassion there bestowed upon him, mercifully allowing him out of the city. We also saw the holiness and righteousness of God as he had to bring about the destruction, uh, the just destruction of a city that was very wicked in the Lord's sight. Since that time in the scripture, Abraham's faith has wavered. He's had some episodes where he did not e uh, evidence a lot of strong faith in the Lord and his protection. Isaac has been born, uh, the child of the promise, uh, Hagar has left with Ishmael, uh, leaving Isaac as the only child uh, of Abraham in the camp. And Isaac has grown into a young lad, a, an older boy. And now it is time for the Lord to come and, and to give a test to Abraham. This passage begins, this uh, recording of this test begins with a command. In Genesis chapter 22, Beginning in verse 1, we read these words. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Take your son, he said, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. So Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took with him two of his young men and his son Isaac. He split wood for a burnt offering and set out to go to the place God had told him about. So we see in this passage of scripture here, the beginning of this journey. God comes and he's, he calls to Abraham. He says, Abraham, Abraham. Uh, this is 
clearly a divine decree that is going out. Abraham responds, here I am. This is an interesting phrase here. It, it's, the, it's an important response. It's an appropriate response. In the Hebrew, this is just one word, where we have here I am three words. In the Hebrew, it is one word, and it's pronounced hinini. He is saying, behold me. Behold, here I am. And really, we find this in several places throughout the scriptures. Uh, we see, of course, Abraham uses it here several times. Um, it's the response that uh, uh, Jacob made when Isaac asked uh, him about his identity, when he tricked him into the blessing that should have gone to Esau. It's the reply that Moses made uh, to the Lord when he when the Lord spoke to him out of the burning bush, he said, Hineni. It's the response that Samuel made uh, in the night when God came to him. You remember a couple of times he did not know what to do. And when he talked to Eli, the, Eli told him it's the Lord. And so uh, the Lord called him that third time and he said, Hineni. It is that response that is made there. In fact, it's the response that Isaiah made uh, when the Lord said, who will I send? Who will go for us? There in that great throne room experience where, I, where Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. He said, Hineni. In fact, we even find it in the New Testament, although in its Greek form there, although Ananias probably spoke it in Hebrew or Aramaic, when God came to him and said, I want you to go and meet with Paul in Damascus and explain to him clearly the way of salvation. And Ananias said, Hineni, here I am, send me. That's the way we need to answer God. Three times in this passage, God will hear that from Abraham. And I hope that when God calls us, we also will be faithful enough to say, Hineni, here I am, Lord, do what you want me to do. Well, having Abraham's attention, God speaks to him. God gives to him his command. He is to go to the land of Moriah, to a mountain there, and there he is to sacrifice his son. And God makes it very clear that, so there's no doubt about this, this is your son, your only son, the son you love. This is Isaac, the son of the promise. Uh, again, as I said, Ishmael has already left. He's no longer in the camp. He's no longer there to be used uh, or to be uh, spoken to or, or have any communication with. He and his mother are gone. So Isaac is now the only son, and we know he's the only son of the prom of the uh, of the promise. Uh, it was through Isaac that the family line would continue, that Abraham would grow into a mighty nation like the sands of the sea and the stars of the sky. And so doing this, we come to see that the first point that I mentioned earlier, and that is here we're talking about the controversy. How could God ask Abraham to sacrifice a son? How could he ask him to do such a thing? Well, there, you know, there's several things that we could say about this. First of all, let's acknowledge that this is a wrong act. In fact, in uh, the Levitical law in uh, Exodus 23, 37, Moses makes it very clear that God says that they were not to practice child sacrifice. So some people say, you know, I think what happened is, is Abraham misheard God. God didn't really ask him to do that. Uh, it, it was just a, a misunderstanding of what God was commanding him, that he really wanted him to go and bless him, uh, pray over him, or something of that nature. Others say, no, this was just something that Abraham dreamed up in a dream, and he thought God spoke to him about it. God had spoken to him in dreams, and he just dreamed God was speaking to him again. And with all the child sacrifice that was going on among the other nations, the nations around about him, Abraham misunderstood and thought it was God. The third most common of these things, these, these are the three that Abraham dreamed it up, that Abraham misunderstood. The third one is, is that God asked him to do this knowing he would not let him go through with it, knowing Isaac would not be sacrificed. That regardless of what Abraham did, God would not allow that to take place. And, and to be quite honest with you, this is the one I lean to. This is a test. 
And God was using this to test him. And Abraham does well. He gets up the first thing in the morning. It leaves early. Uh, he has that encounter with God over the night. And he gets up and gets Isaac, and gets the wood together. And they begin to go out uh, on the trip. Now, I think it's important to note that he was not going to let any excuse slow him down. They weren't going to get to this mountain, which he did not know which one God was going to use. He's just going to the land of Moriah and find that it is all rocky and uh, there's no wood there for sacrifice. He's going to take wood with him. He's going to be sure that he can carry this uh, command all the way through. And he leaves early in the morning on the way, not waiting around. I have often wondered in my mind, uh, what was the conversation that he had with Sarah? I am almost certain he didn't say, Sarah, I'm going to go sacrifice our son. I'll be back in a few days. Uh, I wonder if he just snuck out of town, if uh, Sarah even knew who was going until he was gone. We don't know. The Bible is silent on that. We do know it was a trip of about 60 miles that he had to take. Uh, probably took about three days to do that, going from Beersheba to Mount Moriah. By the way, Mount Moriah is an area that in the future will be the home of the temple. Uh, the Bible tells us in Second Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1, that uh, the temple was built by Solomon on Mount Moriah. Uh, therefore, it would be at a place that would be very close to uh, Mount Calvary. Uh, very similar in nature for that. Um, it would be the uh, future meeting place of God and his people, both in the temple and in the cross through Jesus Christ. When he reaches Mount Moriah, it is now time to go to the top and do what God has called him to do. The editors call the next section of our lesson, The Climb. In verse 4, he, they say, or, or Moses writes, On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go there over there to worship. Then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. In his hand he took the fire and the knife, and the two of them walked on together. Then Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham, and said, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Then the two of them walked on together. Here we see them beginning to climb. They arrive at the base of the mountain on the third day, and they take the things that they have off of the donkey and leave the donkey with the servants. Uh, they are going to watch over it. These two young men are going to watch over it while they're gone. And I, Abraham indicates to the men that both he and Isaac are going to go up the mountain and they both come back. Uh, he doesn't know how, but he has the faith to believe that God is going to do what God said he would do. And God had said it would be through Isaac that Abraham would be blessed. It would be through Isaac that his family uh, would increase. And so he's a child of the promise. God is going to keep his promise. Abraham in some way had faith. He lays the wood on the back of Isaac. And this is a very important uh, aspect of the lesson. It helps symbolize uh, the carrying of the cross by Jesus. It makes Isaac a type of Jesus in preparing to do that and carrying that cross. He carries the wood. But it also, to me, shows a very loving aspect of, of Abraham's life. Yes, the wood would be heavy. It would be harder, uh, a heavy load for the young lad to carry up the mountain. But think about this. It was a safer load. He had the wood secured to his back. He could climb up. If he needed to use his hands, he could use his hands. He had both of them free. On the other hand, Abraham took the fire. Uh, we do not know if it was a torch or uh, an ember from the uh, campfire or what it was, but he took the fire and he took a knife. And with these, he climbed the mountain. These were the two dangerous things. 
certainly the fire uh, occupied a hand, uh, leaving him only one hand, and if he had the knife in that hand, uh, that prevented him from using that as he climbed the mountain. Uh, if he stumbled, he could easily burn himself or cut himself. So here, even on his way to sacrifice his son, he is showing a parent's love and protection for his son. And I think it speaks very highly of the love that he had for his son, Abraham. Uh, that Abraham had for his son, Isaac. Isaac does notice some things. Uh, he's not just going through this blindly. And he sees the fire, he sees the uh, wood, but he doesn't see an animal. And so he asks his father for uh, an answer. Where is the lamb that we would sacrifice? He's, he calls daddy, and Abraham says, Hineni, here I am. And he asks that question of him. And Abraham responds with the assurance that God is going to provide what needs to be. God is going to provide a lamb, a sacrifice uh, for him. And in a sense, God already has, for Isaac was provided by God. Isaac was a gift from God out of the normal uh, stages of life. He is a child uh, of a promise, and that promise is of God. Abraham has the assurance God will do something. Um, now, we do not know if this is what was in Abraham's mind. Uh, we do not know if he uh, saw some uh, resurrection uh, event. We do not know if he uh, imagined uh, anything. We simply know that he spoke with faith, trusting that God was going to work things out. We do know this was a sufficient answer for Isaac. For him, it was sufficient to know God is going to provide, and his father had the faith to believe that. And they go on up. It's now time for the test itself. In verse 9, we read, When they arrived at the place that God had told him about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood. He bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me. So here we see they reach the top. Abraham gathers the stones into an altar. He takes the wood and arranges it on the top of the altar. He turns to Isaac and he takes him and he binds his hands and probably binds his feet and lifts him up and lays him on the altar. As he is laying there, Abraham raises the knife and is about to bring it down to slaughter his son, to kill his son. And God stops him. In his heart, he's already made the commitment to do that. And God calls out, Abraham, Abraham. And he says, Hineni. Here I am, Lord. And he stops him. He says, I know your faith. This is the reason. People argue, why did God have him do this? This is why. The purpose of this command, the purpose of this test, was to test the faith of Abraham. Now, he already knew, God already knew Abraham's faith. He had already seen the future. But now, Abraham knew it. Abraham knew that he would follow through with this. Abraham knew that his faith in God was that strong. And Abraham knew that now God knew. And God would understand and recognize his faith. After all the wavering that has gone on back and forth in his life, his faith is now standing strong with it. That's the test. The test was about his faith. Now we need to understand not all trials that come our way are tests. I've always said that things happen for three reasons. God tests us, Satan tempts us, and we do stupid. This was a test, and Abraham passed it very fully. God will supply the need. God will give a substitute. In verse 13, we read these words. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. 
And Abraham named that place, the Lord will provide. So today it is said it will be provided on the Lord's mountain. So here it is, the substitute. There's a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Uh, the altar was there, the wood was there, uh, even the knife was there. But now the sacrifice is there. It's not Isaac, it's the ram. And Abraham took that ram and he offered it to the Lord as a sacrifice to him. And he identified this place as the Lord will provide. The Lord will uh, give what needs to be given. Uh, this is the, the revealing of the character of God that we talked about in the beginning that this passage uh, will reveal us a, uh, insight into the character of God. And it is that God is a providing God. We use this today and we often speak about it uh, with its uh, Hebrew word Jireh. And we'll talk about Yahweh Jireh or Jehovah Jireh. Uh, one of the names of God. He is the God who provides and as he provided a sacrifice for Abraham in place of Isaac, he provides for our needs. Not always our wants, but he does provide for our needs. Everything that we have need of, he does provide. Which leads us to the third thing that makes this a foundational passage. One of the things he provides is known by theologians as substitutionary atonement. That means we need atonement, but a substitute will make that atonement for us. We won't have to bear the pain, the guilt. And we see that happened in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ went to Calvary's cross without sin. He who knew no sin became sin so that we who were, were not righteous could become the righteousness of God in him. He was our substitute providing our atonement. As that ram was a substitute for Isaac, Jesus is a substitute for us. And we see this in this passage and it, it really lays out uh, as an allegory looking ahead. Think about the things that happened here. Both of these were sons loved by the father. Both were the only son, the son of the promise. Both were uh, special uh, to their father. It was a three day journey for Abraham. For three days, he wondered about what was going on. For three days, he was in the dark about the losing of his son. For three days, Jesus was in the tomb. For three days, the disciples wondered at what was going on, wondered at the result of this, wondered what was going to happen. Isaac uh, had to carry the wood, uh, just as Jesus had to carry the cross. It was a part of the custom of Jesus' day for the convicted man to carry the cross, the cross beam at least. And Isaac also carried that. And both of them carried it to a place that was very close, if not the same. The place where uh, the capital city would be, uh, Jerusalem. The place near the temple, the place called Mount Calvary. Both carried them there. Both were actually placed on the uh, altar, the cross. Uh, they were laid there. It is here that the difference comes about. God would not allow Abraham's son Isaac to suffer the death. He would not allow Abraham to lose his son. But God himself was willing to give up his son and to allow Jesus to die the death of a convicted criminal on the cross. Many think a God would not do that, but what love for, from God that shows and that he would even be willing to not just die, but to die a shameful, humiliating life. He loves us that much. That's what this really points to. The questions that come to us now are, do we really have enough faith? Do we trust God as much as Abraham trusted God? When he calls to us, will we say, Hanini, here I am. Will we be that positive? willing to do what he asks us to do. Do we answer God, here I am, or what do you want? Are we willing to go through with what God asks of us? Or do we trust him enough to believe that what he asks of us is what we need to do, what we need to be? I think this is where our lesson leads us today. Would we pass the test that Abraham passed? 
Would our faith be that strong? As we look at this, think about that and let's pray. Father, I pray that you would help us, that we would be people of faith, that our faith would be strong, that our trust would be complete, that when you call on us, we'll not run and hide, but we'll say, here I am. Use me, direct me, help me to be what you would have me to be. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Jesus who died on the cross for us. For we pray in Christ's name, amen. We will continue our look at the book of Genesis. In our next session, we'll be looking at a passage that's entitled by our editors, Guidance Needed. And it is the account of the looking of a, for a wife for Isaac. I look forward to being with you again when we continue our study.